Hello dear students welcome to Dr. S. Nag Medici classes in today's class let us try to learn the pharmacology of cyclosporine so before understanding the pharmacology of cyclosporine let me classify some immunosuppressants because cyclosporine is a one of the drug which comes under immunosuppressants so among the immunosuppressants we have some drugs like calcineurin inhibitors so Cyclosporine is one of the example in the calcineurin inhibitors and in that tacrolimus is also another example. And we have some other classes like cytotoxic drugs in that we have methotrexate, we have mycophenolate and uh, some examples like uh, azathioprine and uh, we have mycophenolate or examples of cytotoxic drugs. And we also have some immunosuppressants like corticosteroids. So in corticosteroids, prednisolone is one of the example of immunosuppressants. We also have some uh, antibodies that are used as immunosuppressants. So usually immunosuppressants are the drugs which are commonly indicated in autoimmune disorders like psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, conditions like aplastic anemia and uh, uh, some conditions like masthenia gravis. So these are some <coughs> autoimmune disorders. And most of the time, immunosuppressants are also commonly prescribed for organ transplantations. So organ transplantations like kidney transplantations, especially kidney transplantation is commonly done in kidney failure patients. And sometimes heart transplantations, liver transplantations and immunosuppressants are also commonly prescribed in some uh, pulmonary or lung transplantations. Okay, So immunosuppressants have a great impact or great advantage in organ transplantations as well as in the autoimmune disorders so cyclosporine is one of the example in the immunosuppressants and this cyclosporine comes under the class of calcineurin inhibitors calcineurin inhibitor so uh, let me briefly tell some important points about cyclosporine actually cyclosporine is a highly lipophilic drug it is highly lipophilic drug and it is lipophobic drug remember this is very important point it is lipophobic drug and usually this cyclosporine is obtained from tolicocladium class of tolicocladium class of fungus and the most of the time this cyclosporine is usually obtained from buvaria buvaria nevia Bivaria nevia is one of the fungus and from this fungus the cyclosporine is obtained and remember nowadays we don't get cyclosporine from this fungus actually so we are synthesizing all these compounds in the laboratory so it is very easy to synthesize so now we are not getting compound from this fungus we are artificially synthesizing these compounds so now let us see the mode of action of Cyclosporine, it is very important as I was telling you that cyclosporine is a calcineurin inhibitor. Okay, so listen, calcineurin is actually this calcineurin is very important in formation or in the generation of interleukin 2, IL2, interleukin 2, interleukin 2, and some uh, 2 and cytokines, and these two. Interleukin 2 and cytokines are again very important in the proliferation of macrophages and they are also very important in the formation of uh, T helper cells. T helper cells. So, whereas T helper cells and T helper cell is very important in the cell mediated immunity as well as in the humoral immunity and by that it produces the antibodies as well as it uh, activates actually it activates macrophages which is helpful in cell mediated immunity. So calcineurin is very important. Remember, cyclophosphamide binds to a uh, intracellular protein compound called cyclophilin. Okay, whereas cyclophilin is very important in the activation or in the formation of calcineurin. Whereas calcineurin is important in the formation of macrophages and T helper cells through IL2 and cytokines. And this cyclosporin goes and binds this cyclophilin intracellular protein. And by binding these, it will stop or it will inhibit the formation of calcineurin. That is the reason 
cyclosporin is a calcineurin inhibitor and among cyclosporin we also have tacrolimus tacrolimus is another example uh, tacrolimus is also another example which comes under calcineurin inhibitor okay so cyclosporin binds on the cyclophilic which is a endogenous intracellular protein by that it stops formation of calcineurin that is the reason we call these drugs are calcineurin inhibitors so this is the mode of action and by that it reduces or it uh, it inhibits the proliferation of macrophages it also reduces the activation of t helper cells and it also inhibits the production of interleukin 2 so this is the mode of action of cyclosporin and by that it shows reduced activity of immune system or it is called immunosuppression activity so this is the mode of action and now uh, reason guys uh, cyclosporin was previously called as cyclosporin a and uh, one very important point about cyclosporin is it is a highly lipophilic compound it is not soluble in water that is the reason it is most commonly available as uh, oral it is available as oral form but in soft gelatin capsules so in soft gelatin capsules they are utilized so now we'll discuss in brief about the toxicokinetics or uh, pharmacokinetics of cyclosporin remember guys cyclosporin is available in oral form it is also available in uh, iv parental form as well as in uh, oral uh, solution form okay so when oral form is given actually the cyclosporin is not soluble in water and it is available as soft gelatin capsules okay when cyclosporin is given through oral route it is absorbed from the GA tract and it undergoes severe first pass metabolism and by first pass metabolism the bioavailability of cyclosporin is around 20 to 50 percent and roughly around 35 percent so cyclosporin bioavailability is only 35 percent due to severe first pass effect okay this is very important point and after first pass metabolism it is distributed in the tissues through binding on the erythrocytes or in the white blood cells leukocytes and on the lipids li lipoproteins actually lipoproteins lipoproteins so it binds on the erythrocytes 50 percent of the cyclosporin binds on the erythrocytes rbc's and 10 percent of the compound or 10 percent of the cyclosporin binds in white blood cells and remaining 40 percent binds on lipoproteins and by that it is distributed in the tissues this is very important and yeah 99 percent of the compound is metabolized in the liver and it is metabolized by cytochrome p3a4 enzymes cytochrome p3a4 enzymes which is present in the liver and the metabolic products are excreted from the urine and remember only less than 1% roughly around 1 0.5% uh, 0.5% of the cyclosporin is excreted unchanged in urine so only less than 1% of unchanged compound is excreted from the urine and 99% of the compound is excreted as metabolic product from the urine okay so this is important pharmacokinetics about the cyclosporin remember these points it is highly absorbed on the erythrocytes and in re reduced amounts of uh, red blood cells and white blood cells its concentration will be present in the lipoproteins only so that is about the pharmacokinetics and now we'll see about the adverse drug reactions this is very important adrs because most of the immunosuppressants or uh, narrow therapeutic drugs and they are having high risk of infections so patient will have high susceptibility to infections that is one major ADR and uh, other than that we also have some ADRs like ADRs on the central nervous system patient will have severe headness tremors and sometimes uh, confusion and convulsions convulsions are commonly seen ADRs on the central nervous system and ADRs associated with GI tract on the GA tract, patient will have pancreatitis, 
pancreatitis is commonly seen in ADR along with pancreatitis patient also will have hyperbilirubinemia hyperbilirubinemia is the another uh, adverse reaction which is related to GAT and hepatic system okay hepatic system and other examples of ADRs are uh, we will see on the renal system on the renal system cyclosporin causes high nephrotoxicity it is a high nephrotoxic drug cyclosporin is a nephrotoxic drug so this is very important it causes nephrotoxicity and some other examples of drug, uh, adverse reactions which is related to uh, cardiovascular system in cardiovascular system is it causes hyper hypertension it causes hypertension and some other ADRs which are associated or uh, see uh, cyclosporin causes hypertrichosis is very important ADR hypertrichosis it causes gingival hyperplasia okay Hyperpla gingival uh, tissues will be increased in their size and hypertrichosis is commonly seen due to hypertrichosis is a condition where patient will have severe growth of the hair okay and myopathy 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 is very important ADR it causes hyperkalemia sometimes increased potassium levels it causes increased glucose levels hyperglycemia and sometimes it also causes increased lipoprotein uh, lipid value this lipidemia is also another ADR so these are some basic ADRs which is associated with cyclosporin and now we'll go with the adverse drug reactions adverse drug reactions uh, sorry uh, drug interactions drug interactions are very important listen guys some drugs will increase the plasma drug concentration of the cyclosporin whereas some drugs will reduce the plasma drug concentrations in that see the drugs which increases the plasma drug concentration of cyclosporin are erythromycin doxycycline and we also have drugs like uh, diltiazem diltiazem we have oral contraceptives oral contraceptives also these drugs will increase the plasma drug concentration of cyclosporin and by that it causes toxicity and some drugs will reduce the plasma drug concentration in that we have ripampicin isoniazid phenytoin and phenobarbital phenytoin and phenobarbital are another examples that causes reduced plasma drug concentrations of cyclosporin and remember some other drug interactions there are drugs like ac inhibitors captopril naraprel or some examples of ac inhibitors and when ac inhibitors are given along with cyclosporin ac inhibitors already causes hyperkalemia and this drug also causes hyperkalemia by that it exacerbates increased potassium levels hyperkalemia and we also know that ac inhibitors reduces the uh, perfusion rate in the uh, kidneys actually so that causes ac inhibitors also causes nephrotoxicity and when cyclosporin is given along with ac inhibitors it causes nephrotoxicity it is very important drug interactions and drugs like nsaids nsaids and we have some antiviral drugs antifungal drugs like amphotericin b and we have very important antibiotics like aminoglycosides so all these drugs are highly nephrotoxic drugs and when these drugs are given along with cyclosporin which is a nephrotoxic drug cyclosporin causes 70 percent of the cases it causes nephrotoxicity so cyclosporin and along with these drugs when it is given it causes kidney damage or nephrotoxicity so this is very important drug interactions with cyclosporin and these drugs okay so there are some other drugs like statins hmg co inhibitors so statins causes myopathy and uh, liver failure so along with cyclosporin when statins are given statins however uh, causes myopathy and cyclosporin also causes myopathy by that uh, breakdown of the muscles increases even that is a major drug interaction so these are some of the drug interactions of cyclosporin and now let us see the uses and formulations of cyclosporin as i was telling you that Cyclosporin is usually formulated as soft gelatin capsules because it is not soluble in water. We can't punch as tablets or uh, other hard gelatin capsules. It is formulated as 
oily formulations okay so usually we have 25 mg 50 mg and 100 mg soft gelatin capsules soft gelatin capsules okay and we also have oral uh, oily formulations okay oral formulations are available and most of some other times uh, due to reduced bioavailability most of the time cyclosporin is given through parenteral route and in parenteral route we have injections and iv formulations remember in 1 ml of the solution we have 5 mg or 5 mg per ml formulations are available so we have uh, 1 ml 5 ml and 50 ml vials so 1 ml contains 5 mg of the drug so 1 ml 5 ml and 50 ml vials are available in the market as parenteral form formulations it can be given through injections or iv infusions so these are some of the formulations of cyclosporin and remember cyclosporin is a second line drug in many organ transplantations as well as in the autoimmune disorders autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and severe asthma conditions it is also very useful in psoriasis conditions okay and uh, some other organ transplant and transplantations conditions also cyclosporin is used along with corticosteroids like prednisolone okay organ transplantations like kidney transplantations and heart transplantations so these are the uses and uh, brief information about cyclosporin and its pharmacology i think you learned something from our video and if you if i miss any con uh, any concept related to cyclosporin please comment below and keep watching our videos related to pharmacology and keep liking our videos sharing videos thank you for watching